first we will identify this uh, the bone the bone is scapula scapula can be easily identified by its triangular shape the next is uh, we identify the side of this bone since this is a paired bone going by the rule as before the uh, acromion the coracoid the glenoid are all features of the superior this is the inferior angle so that covers the superior inferior uh, axis next the anterior posterior axis we know that this process is called the spinous process that is projecting posteriorly okay and then next the medial lateral axis uh, we can identify the glenoid process the acromion and the coracoid all these are projecting laterally and uh, so this is the medial border so that makes it the left bone this uh, left scapula is located on the left side and it is almost uh, located on the posterior lateral aspect of the uh, rib cage for example this is representing the rib cage my fingers are the ribs and my thumb is almost the median plane you imagine like that so this is located like this on the posterior lateral aspect let me uh, rotate this like this and uh, make you understand that this is the convexity of the rib cage the thoracic cage so this is located posterior lateral aspect of the rib cage so it is not uh, located like this it is located like this on the posterior aspect lateral aspect almost tangential to the uh, curvature of the ribs so you can identify that the glenoid process is not projecting laterally but it is projecting anterolaterally now let's have a quick view into its uh, chest ct and in this chest ct you can see that this is the lung the black one is the left lung this is right you know that in the ct this is the left side and this is the right side so this is the rib cage you can see the ribs and the intercostal spaces between it as we scroll and just on the posterior lateral aspect this thick white bar that you see here is the scapula okay you can see the two scapulae the scapula on this side the right side and the scapula on the left side and you can also see that the glenoid as i scroll on the upper part uh, you can see that the glenoid is articulating with the head of the humerus forming the shoulder joint and look at the orientation of the uh, glenoid this is the cup like glenoid fossa you can see that it is oriented it is directed almost anterolaterally this is anterior and this is lateral so this is located uh, directed almost anterolaterally next we are going to the uh, features since the triangle are bone let's first identify the uh, the borders of the triangle this is the medial border it is somewhat thick then this is the superior border superior border is somewhat a little bit concave and it's very thin but when you compare that with the lateral border the lateral border is very heavy okay very thick and very heavy uh, scapula is always remembered like everything is with three it is a triangular bone it has three borders so it has three angles also this is a superior angle which is the converging point of the medial border and the superior border the inferior angle is the converging point of the medial border and the lateral border and the lateral angle uh, is the converging point of the lateral border and the superior border and the lateral border has a lot of features it is very thick uh, the lateral angle has a lot of features uh, coming to the medial border it is a very common question that is asked in osteology what is what are the vertebral levels of these the superior angle corresponds to vertebra number two this is uh, the the spine of the scapula corresponds to the vertebral number three and the inferior angle of the uh, scapula is a very important surface marking feature uh, to identify the vertebral level and this is corresponding to seven so it is two three seven you can remember it like 237 uh, the, the next we are going to the three process of the scapula one is this process this is called the spinous process to identify spinous process i have to uh, turn the scapula like this to make you understand that the scapular blade is like this and from the scapular blade the spinous process is projecting like a shelf posteriorly so that is the spinous process spinous process in this view you can identify that the spinous process is triangular it is triangularly projecting backwards from the uh, scapular blade so that is called the spinous process from the spinous process you have an a, 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 an extra fitting like this okay that process is called the acromion so acromion and spine are uh, though it looks continuous there are two different processes this is the spinous process and from the spinous process laterally overhanging the glenoid uh, fossa you have the acromion process okay uh, this is the acromion angle the word acromion means the tip of the shoulder acro means tip and almost means shoulder okay so that is the acromion process this is the acromion angle this is a palpable feature on your body next uh, process is this this is the coracoid process coracoid is called coracoid because it looks almost like the uh, beak of a crow 
okay so that is why it is called coracoid process we need to know that there are two notches one is the suprascapular notch also called as a scapular notch this is bridged by a suprascapular ligament okay sometimes uh, this can be can be ossified okay uh, that ligament uh, has different morphologies and sometimes it can be ossified this is the spinoglenoid notch because this is the glenoid process or the glenoid fossa and this is spinous process so the lateral part of the spine has a spinoglenoid notch spinoglenoid notch helps uh, transmission of the nerve and the suprascapular nerve and the vessels that passes through the uh, suprascapular notch it goes through the spinoglenoid notch downwards above the spine you have the supraspinous fossa below the spine you have the infraspinous fossa and this is called the subscapular fossa subscapular fossa is anterior uh, supraspinous and the infraspinous fossa, uh, fossa are uh, posterior now uh, uh, muscle attachments on the medial border you have the levator scapula attached here when that pulls the scapula will be elevated so that is levator scapula here you have the rhomboids the rhomboids minor will be attached here rhomboids major will be attached here so they are the retractors of the scapula they will retract the scapula towards the medial border uh, on the this infraspinous fossa you have the infraspinatus that will go laterally towards attaching to the upper end of the humerus from the supraspinous fossa you have the supraspinatus muscle uh, that will run it is a tricky course it runs below the acromion it runs below the acromion above the glenoid process okay uh, its location is above the shoulder joint so that is a supraspinous supraspinatus muscle uh, getting attachment here now from the subscapular fossa you have the subscapularis muscle that goes anterior to the glenoid process that is subscapularis muscle so uh, in these three big fossa you have infraspinatus supraspinatus and subscapularis uh, next, uh, from the lateral border, from the lateral border of the scapula, you have the teres minor here, here, and the teres major here. They are all going towards the humerus. Teres minor is having a bigger origin from the uh, scapula. The teres major is lower down. It is having a smaller area of origin from the uh, scapula. That that word is a little bit paradoxical because minor is small and major is big according to the word, but its attachment to the scapula is paradoxically the opposite. Now coming to the glenoid process, it is somewhat pear shaped. Above the glenoid process, you have the supraglenoid tubercle, which gives attachment to the long head of biceps. Uh, here you have the infraglenoid tubercle. Infraglenoid tubercle gives attachment to the long head of triceps. So you have two long heads from the supraglenoid and the infraglenoid, uh, the long head of biceps and the triceps respectively. From the coracoid process, you have from the tip, you have C and B. C is for the uh, coracobrachialis muscle and B is for the short head of biceps. So it is uh, interesting to note that short head arises from here and long head arises from here. Go, both goes towards uh, on the anterior aspect of the humerus. Now here you have a small uh, muscle attachment uh, that is the omohyoid. Omos the word means shoulder. So that is one muscle that is attached to the scapula, an unexpected muscle attached to the scapula. Ventral surface, on the costal surface, I told that there is subscapularis here, but on the medial border, you have the serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is attached on the medial border on the costal surface. On the uh, dorsal surface, you have the rhomboids. It's a very, very important muscle attached to the uh, costal aspect of the scapula. And on the acromion process, you have on the lower part of the crust of the spine of the scapula and the lateral part, you have the deltoid. And on the inner margin of the acromion and on the up, uh, superior edge of the crust of the spine of the scapula, you have the trapezius. So here you have trapezius, here you have the deltoid. You can remember this like on the outer ring, you have deltoid because deltoid will be arising from the outer ring like this. Okay, you know the delts are uh, on the lateral part of the shoulder. Okay. Uh, and this is a trapezius, it goes towards the neck. So that is on the inner margin, trapezius. So that is a trapezius, this is the deltoid. Next we are going uh, a quick course on what are the movements of the scapula. This is elevation, this is depression. Elevation is mainly by the levator scapula, also the upper fibers of trapezius. That's why you can do shrugging movement by the upper movement of the trapezius. Uh, this is depression, depression is mainly by gravity. 
This is a retraction of the scapula where the rhomboids and the middle fibers of the trapezius will play, play a part. This is protraction of the scapula. Protraction of the scapula is done by serratus anterior, uh, serratus anterior attachment like this that will pull and cause a protraction. Protraction will occur uh, on the plane of the uh, ribs on the thoracic cage. That is protraction. So this movement is protraction. This movement is retraction. And the next is lateral rotation and medial rotation. We have to look at the inferior angle, which is the landmark, which we will use to identify the, uh, the lateral and the medial rotation of the scapula. This is lateral rotation, which is the one moment that occurs when you uh, overhead uh, abduct the uh, your arm. When the arm is uh, abducted overhead, it causes lateral rotation of the scapula. Uh, the reverse movement is called medial rotation. Why it's called lateral rotation and medial rotation of the scapula? You have to look at the inferior angle if the inferior angle moves laterally it is called lateral rotation if the inferior angle moves medially it is called medial rotation so lateral rotation is done by the lower fibers of the serratus anterior as well as the uh, upper and the lower fibers of the uh, trapezius so that causes lateral rotation okay this is medial rotation so these are the movements of the scapula elevation depression retraction protraction lateral rotation and medial rotation